Regular viewers know that I've become very skeptical about the oil industry here. Even the Iran standoff wasn't enough to give the price of crude more than a modest bump because we have so much untapped supply here in the U.S. And that's why oil service plays like Core Labs are struggling. But I could be wrong. Some of the oil producers did very well in the fourth quarter. And if the economy continues to improve, well, that could potentially lead to higher demand for energy. And that's why tonight I want to get a better read on the entire industry as well as a fantastic company which is called Parsley Energy and Exploration Production Company, which I've been watching since it came public. It's a pure play on the Permian Basin, the oil-rich region of Texas that's transformed the entire industry. Just today, the company closed on its acquisition of Jagged Peak Energy. They see a bright future for oil because they believe American producers will be more disciplined about bringing on new supply. So let's check in with Matt Gallagher, who's the president and CEO of Parsley Energy, learn more about his deal and where he sees the industry heading. Wow, Mr. Gallagher, welcome to Mad Money. Well, Jim, thanks for having me. Long time listener, first time interview, so I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> That's, thank you for listening for a long time. I have been a huge fan of your company, your founder, and your vision, but I want others to know what it is because I think that if people really want to play the pure part of American oil boom, it's parsley. Well, that's right, and we're right in the core of the Permian Basin. We've been built from scratch as an unconventional shale player. We started drilling in 2009. We've seen the whole horizontal evolution unfold in front of us, and we've been a part of it, and we're excited to close on our acquisition today, just a natural fit for Parsley Energy. Were you surprised at all with the increased tensions with Iran that we didn't have more of a move in oil? Well, actually, I, I think that we're a part of the reduced impact of that. So there were not lines around the gas pumps. We were able to keep the prices low because of this resource renaissance that we've been a part of as the shale producers. So you did not see that huge jump in pricing. And really, uh, this, this uh, growth in production that we've been able to deliver has, has helped insulate those impacts of geopolitical tension. So we're actually proud to be a part of that. Well, let's talk about the Uber growth of production, the jagged peak energy acquisition, because it, you're making a statement and you're making a statement that your stock should be used to buy really good properties that can continue to produce a lot of oil. Well, that's right. It's a natural fit. It's right next door to us. It's actually supportive to our free cash flow growth. And when I talk about this resource renaissance, uh, it's been a five year expansion phase. that's larger than anybody ever thought on the production growth. But what we need to do as shale leaders is we need to convert to a financial renaissance, and we have to deliver returns to our shareholders. So we've demonstrated that there's a tremendous resource in the ground right here in the United States, and now we need to turn that into competitive businesses. But Matt, what happens if the other guys don't have discipline? Because very, at various times in the industry, the companies have been conservative and, and I'd say uh, aren't willing to uh, – borrow too much, and then other times they just go way right over their skis. Does it matter what other guys do for Parsley? Well, I think on a broad scale, yes. Uh, I think we're really excited to see the industry as a whole pull in their CapEx spending. You did not see an immediate rebound coming into 2020 in capital programs. Uh, Parsley specifically is trying to deliver a more consistent capital program over the course of five years, a decade. We're already in a very volatile industry. We want to take the business model and de-risk it and deliver a standard business model year in and year out. Uh, people so have to if know anybody it, were to react. Well, I was going to say, your deck describes that, and it's very unconventional because most companies are trying to show how they're going to grow no matter what. But you are the opposite in your deck. Well, that's right. And when you look at uh, how we're built, we're built out of very highly talented engineers and geologists, hardworking people out in the field. Over the, over the past decades, we were built to recover resources. And now we've done that in spades. And we just have to turn this into high margin, consistent margin, and growing cash flow uh, returns to investors. You're unconventional in another way. When you look at your uh, deck, and I've got it in front of me, you talk about uh, environmental, social, and governance. Even though you're an oil company, some people would say that's counterintuitive. You are a despoiler of the environment. That's not the way you fit into the picture, is it? No, I appreciate you catching it that way, and it's very important to us. And a lot of people say, you know, I'm a millennial or I'm on the, the edge of millennials. And we hear these guys ask about the importance of social impacts to the companies. And when I hear millennials and, and people around this great city of Austin saying the importance of, 
of social and environmental impact, I think, you know what, it's about time. And we need to take a leadership stance. All the oil and gas operators, especially the domestic operators, really have a leg up in how we do business. We like to hold things to the highest standards. We, we invest in our communities. Uh, we operate in and around the environments we live in. And we want to protect them to the best of our abilities. So we need to be accountable and we need to be transparent and we need to get better over time. So we put this baseline report out there as an inaugural report and we're going to get better over time. We're looking forward to it. And that includes uh, not reckless flaring, which a lot of people are very worried about who care about the environment. Flaring is a very hot topic and we're, we pride ourselves in not hooking up wells and the long term planning needed ahead of time to reduce flaring. In, flag, in fact, we flare well under 5%, 2% last year, um, and we have to stay accountable on that front. There's some operators in the Permian Basin flare 20 to 30%, and that's unacceptable. Uh, we have to do as a group, whether uh, we self-regulate or get the help of uh, higher power to regulate, we need to get that percentage well below 5%. Well, congratulations for, for the company that you guys have built. It's remarkable, done in a very, uh, in a very short time, but it's the pure play with great financial strictures, of which I'm not used to seeing from a lot of the oil companies, and certainly nothing from an oil company about environmental, social, and governance. Thank you so much, Matt Gallagher. Good to see you, sir. Great to see you, Jim. Thank you. All right, Matt, uh, he's the president and CEO of Parsley Energy P. Hey, millennials, if you feel like you have to own an oil stock, this is really the only one I can recommend. Man Bunny's back after the break. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.